Miss Abutaya, Judy, Judy and the Google. Judy is 20 years old and she stands 5 feet 4 inches. She loves to sing and dance and her greatest dream is to finish her studies. She also dreams of becoming an influential beauty queen and that is why she joined Miss Palawan 2021. From the municipality of Agutaya, Judy and the Guhoy. Roselli Luis Joy Goliardo. Luisa is 19 years old and she stands 5 feet 4 inches. Her interests involve music. She loves playing music as a DJ and playing keyboards on her spare time. She is an advocate for persons with disabilities in child development. Ladies and gentlemen, from the municipality of Araceli, Luis Joy Goliardo. is 18 years old and she stands 5 feet 4 inches. It is her dream to build her own school for the indigenous people. A school that will educate them to preserve their culture and tradition. She is a proud Tagbanwa tribe member here in our province and she champions individualism. From the municipality of Palawa, Imbrida Avia. Pateraza, Arlene Joy de Ganta. Len is 18 years old and she stands 5 feet 5 inches tall. She is an adrenaline junkie who enjoys adventures like trekking and mountain climbing. She joined Miss Palawa in 2021 because she wanted to encourage the youth to do the same thing, showcase their talent and to be confident about their own skills. Ladies and gentlemen, from the municipality of Pateraza, I'll enjoy the Ganta. Angelica Paduga. Laika is 24 years old and she stands 5 feet 3 inches tall. She currently works as an apprentice architect in a construction firm. As an architect, she wants to promote community development and preservation of wildlife and natural resources in our province. On her free time, she loves reading books, exercising, and engaging on outdoor activities. From the municipality of Busuanga, Angelica Paduga. Miss Cagayan Silio 
Jamaica Venturillo, or Jami, is 20 years old and stands 5 feet 6 inches tall. She is a fan of writing spoken poetry and discovering facts about history so she could widen her knowledge. She is an advocate for the preservation of our environment through educating the youth because she believes that education is a powerful key to change the world. From the Municipality of Cagayan Silio, ladies and gentlemen, Jamaica Ventorillo. Angelica Lopez, Ikai is 20 years old and stands 5 feet 8 inch tall in height. She is addicted to watching different documentaries and animes. Her advocacy is all about mental health awareness. She wants to share her story and be an inspiration to others. And through that, create positive change in her community and eventually to the world. From the Municipality of Puyo, Angelica Lopez. Cherry Ann Balisakan. Cherry is 23 years old and she stands 5 feet 4 inches tall. She is, an, she is an entrepreneur who loves swimming and singing as a hobby. She joined Best Flower 2021 because through joining beauty pageants, she discovers something new within herself that surprises her. She wants to end poverty by empowering the millennials and the coming generations. From the Municipality of Dumaran, ladies and gentlemen, Sherry Ann Balisakan. Dana Yapar Koy. Dance is 19 years old and stands 5 feet 5 inch tall. Dance is a proud beach bomb and certified island girl. She is a believer of a sustainable tourism through community empowerment. She wants people in the community to be involved in protecting and cultivating our ecosystem and tourism spot for a better economy and ecology. From the Municipality of Il Nido, Dana Yapar Koy. Concepcion, 22, Lina Pacan. Miss Lina Pacan, Tidal Home Concepcion. Clyde is 22 years old and stands 5 feet 8 inches tall. She is a proud Universidad ng Pilipinas student and loves creative writing, singing, and playing musical instruments on her vacant time. She wants to use this platform to promote the importance of education in taking care of our mental health, especially to students like her. From the Municipality of Lina Baca, Light of Hope, Concepcion. Say 
Kasay, Marie Paz Eliazar. Tantan is 20 years old and stands 5 feet 4 inch tall. She is a future language teacher and a proud pure-blooded Cuyunon. She advocates the preservation and cultivation of the Cuyunon dialect and all the dialects that we have in our province. She firmly believes that the youth should embrace our culture and roots. From the municipality of Magsaysay, Marie Paz Eliazar. Puerto Princesa City, Sena Ashbel Buño. Ina is 20 years old and stands 5 feet 4 inch tall. She is interested on in joining organization and participating in community outreaches that make sense and matters to her. She supports an organization called Petals for Hope that aims to touch people's lives by recycling and repurposing bouquets of flowers that are bound to be thrown away to bring joy and hope to the people of Palawan. One petal at a time from the city of Puerto Princesa, Sena Ashbel Buño. Cousin Normally Abrera. Lynn is 21 years old and stands 5 feet 4 and a half inches tall. She loves surfing the internet and getting informed with current events through watching news. She dreams of representing the province in a national beauty pageant and promote the tourism of our province. She is an advocate of sustainable tourism in Palawan and wants to create project that would highlight the importance of health. From the municipality of Quezon, Normaline Abrera. Miss Rizal, Joanna Marie Garcia. Jo is 19 years old and stands 5 feet 8 inch tall. She is a future nurse who loves exploring outdoors. She considers herself as an optimistic person who is not afraid of learning new things in life. Sustainable development is where her is. She wants to preserve our rich biodiversity and educate people to be responsible and do not compromise or harm our environment. From the municipality of Rizal, Joanna Garcia. Haina Karanda. Heinz is 20 years old and stands 5 feet 3 inches tall. Her interests involve photography, sports, and traveling. She is not afraid of failure that it is an essential part of growth. She wants to empower everyone through encouraging them to give importance to their education. From the municipality of Rojas, Haina Karanda.
beautiful ladies. As we know, Palawan's economy has always been tourism dependent. And now that we are, they say, in the recovery period, do you think it's already feasible to open our borders considering that we still have so many cases of COVID-19 here in our province? And what do you think would be the, dis the advantage or disadvantage of doing such? Well, it is also for the good of our province, as our province is the forerunner of tourism. So um, I think the advantage of it would be great because it would lead to um, uh, it, it would come we would have a more income. And but the disadvantage of it is that, as we all know, that the pandemic is still right there and it has evolved. So I think that for the safety of everyone, the borders should be only open to the local and the domestic tourists only, provided with their um, RP-PCR test results that are negative and uh, by 48 hours before. So um, opening our borders will be a great thing too, but as long as we prevent something, but that prevention is better than cure. Thank you. Again. Um, we all know that our tourism industry is the backbone of our province's economy and our province actually has this approach of gradual and granular opening of our tourist destinations. But with, um, with now that um, um, crises are easy and flights are reforming, tourism is definitely showing signs of returning. Um, while this is helpful for our industry to to bounce back, we should also um, look for. Um, we should also um, think of what this might do to our tourist destinations. We could put our tourist destinations under the um, dangers of mass tourism, and this could also spur the spread of the disease. And protecting Palawan's key assets, the very reason for tourist arrivals, is a fundamental pillar of any type of recovery. And we should ensure that we won't solve a problem by creating another. Thank you. Oh, so the question <laughs> is, as you know, I, oh, right. Good evening, everyone. I believe that opening the borders here in Palawan can help the economy of the Palawanians, the livelihood that they have, as the economy of Palawanians is mostly of tourism. But I believe that opening the borders here in Palawan, in Palawan can also be a disadvantage for us as coronavirus is still out there and with no proper vaccination, I believe that it is not wise to open the borders as of yet. But as, as, as others have said, that opening the border, opening tourism to locals here in, Pal in Palawan is beneficial for others as it can also boost the economy but opening the borders to outsiders is a disadvantage for us so i believe that we should plan more and wait for the vaccine to come out so that everybody can feel safe and enjoy palawa as its beautiful nature thank you thank you, thank you so much thank you so much for palawa views and of course thank you as well to this puerto princesa el nido and miss Sunday. Now let's have our third guest from our media partners, sir. Hi, I'm Sri Malvas from Alpanese Philippines. My question is for what the princess Tai Tai and Kagian see you. Here's the question. We Filipinos, we are very into pageantry. But not everybody likes pageants, especially those who think pageants are only for perfect bodies desirable appearance and brain of course. How can you convince that how can you convince people that pageants are good? Um all I can say is there is no perfect industry and we are here to make this industry perfect by teaching and learning the people and learning um by, te by learning and teaching the people the good that there is in pageantry. And if I may be bold to say I actually don't have an an as an exact answer to that question because at this time ideally, at this time ideally 
the government leaders, um, organizations, and the entire community should focus their attention more and resources more on mitigating the economic impacts of the pandemic. And however, um, while the specifics has evolved, the role of a title holder has always been to unite, advocate, and entertain. It's someone you can all get behind regardless of ideologies, um, beliefs, and political affiliations. And most importantly for Ms. Palawan, 2021, for example, we are doing this for a worthy cause of supporting the Miss Palawan Charities Incorporated. And that's why I believe that the role of beauty pageants is more relevant now more than ever. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. So what I can say is that um, as people think that beauty pageants are just for the pretty ones or the sexy ones, but it is not. We should remove the the mind, uh, the the our thinking that we have to be perfect to be able to join beauty pageants. In fact, oh sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that pageants have big impacts because when um when a title holder speaks up for other people and. Um, practices her advocacy for others. Um, beauty queens usually focuses on how much they can give back to the community. Because as much as um, having having popularity and being known, what's important is the pureness of the heart in giving and giving back to the community is the is the essence of beauty pageants as well. Thank you. Good evening. I can say and share to other people how good pageantry is through me. I have a reflection of how beauty pageants were able to help women, to help our society. Beauty pageants are often mis misinterpreted as somehow just only to show physical figure, just to show our talents, our skills, but it's not. It's far more way than that. It is a platform which helps us to be better, to accept ourselves, to show to the world that beauty pageants is not just about for the standard of beauty that the society stands for us. It is within us, how we see ourselves, how we love ourselves, how we appreciate and know our value as a woman, not just for a woman, for the people that we know around us, but for a greater purpose for our community. That is what beauty pageant stands, not only during this pandemic, but all through these days. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Thank you so much to Miss Perta Pantanzili, Miss Cagayancillo, and Miss Tai Tai. Now let's move on to our fourth media partner for tonight. And that is from. So, uh, good evening. I'm James from uh, RM and Radio Malaysia, right? and uh, our station was also not mentioned, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, um, I only have two questions for uh, six candidates from uh, Cagayan Silio, San Vicente, Taytay, Puerto, Dumaran, and Tawernet. Okay. Okay, uh, my first question. Uh, are beauty pageants still relevant during this pandemic? Beauty pageants are more relevant during this pandemic. It symbolizes not just to show how beautiful women are, not just passionate women are, but how we symbolize hope amidst the pandemic that we are facing right now. People often see beauty pageants as somehow just to show our beauty, our physical beauty, our wit, and our passion. But it's way more than that. It is on how we will be able to fulfill our purpose for our community, especially our advocacy amidst this pandemic. It is how we can help others, not just by giving materialistic things, but sharing our smiles, sharing the gift of love, sharing the influence on how we can make them more ready, more prepared, and to keep on moving forward amidst the pandemic that we are facing right now. Because I believe beauty pageants is not just for women, it is for all of us to see ourselves and know that we can conquer our dreams. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. We Filipinas, as a pageant-loving nation, 
it, it gives us hope to pursue life and it is something we should look forward to. It, it is to spread positivity and that's for that is the relevant of beauty budget during this pandemic. Thank you. Okay, uh, next is Tai uh, Tai. The relevance of beauty pageant in this pandemic. So for example, I am a health worker, I am a medical technologist, and I am using my platform of influence to focus on health and wellness. I think that this is important, especially now that we have this pandemic, because I want to be a channel of information for others to know that we can you uh, we can do something to prevent the spread of PTC. We can do something in our little ways to stop the spread of the, the disease, like proper hand washing, proper hygiene, physical distancing, and so on. So I think that it is um, pageants are relevant. Pageants are relevant because we are uh, we showcase or we can show other people or and be an example for other people that's all good evening everyone we all ladies here are an example of a beauty pie, a beauty queen that is uh, that is having a hope in this beauty pageant and being a beauty pageant, we are a mold to be someone who will inspire others. And through this pageant, we can help those young individuals not to give up their life, that their dreams has a purpose, that they have a purpose, that they have the capability and they have the skills to <coughs> face their fears, which is, I personally, one of my fears is to face the people. And this beauty and, and this beauty pageant helps me to develop it, to be more confident. And I think the, and I think, and I believe that the relevance of this beauty pageant is to mold us women to be strong, to be courageous, to be someone who is can can have a positive impact in people's life. And I think beauty pageant really help us to achieve our dreams and to be the voice for those individuals who really have a dream too. Thank you. Um, at this time, ideally, ideally, yeah, um, the government leaders, organizations, and the entire community should focus their um, resources in um, helping mitigate the effects of the coronavirus pandemic. And people have this idea that beauty pageants are all about glitz and glamour. And the papa tanong yung malapit ko. Um, but pa may pageant, iba may pandemia pa, but pa silang papaganda lang siya. However, beauty, pa beauty pageants, beauty queens, title holders are harbingers of hope. And at this time, especially, it, the um, beauty pageants, the pageantry industry is very relevant because we can use this platform to remind someone else that no matter what calamity, pandemics, or um, um, climate change may collectively confront us, there is still hope and um, there is no reason to smile. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Pageantry is much more relevant as of now as it gives us a form of normality in our lives, especially with the year of lockdown. With the whole, with all of the quarantine, the lockdown, the coronavirus, all the things that happened to us in the past year, we need something that gives us hope, that gives us something normal. Pageantry has always been our lives ever since, ever since we were young. Pageantry has always been in the, inside the blood of Filipinos. It's something that we've always cherished and it's something that we're proud of. And I believe that pageantry gives us hope. It gives us 
it more it just it just gives it doesn't just give us hope. It gives an opportunity to reach out to people. It gives a, give us an opportunity to help other people, to charities, to organizations, and as well as now Miss Palau and Charities, we are giving we're we have we are putting a lot of contributions to it and we're helping a lot of people to promote their own advocacy advocacy. So I think pageantry is much more relevant as of now, as it not just gives it hope, but also fulfills the dreams of many people. Thank you. Okay, well, for my last question, uh, kasi, uh, to be Miss Palawan no, is it's also to be um, uh, the voice of the people. So being our voice, uh, what is your opinion on the issue of the division of Palawan in the three provinces? I believe it's the same as other decisions made by the government. Every decision has its disadvantages and advantages. The division of Palawan aims to promote and to focus on different areas of our country. But then, there are different people who are there to only see the disadvantage of this law or of this platform. And as Miss Palawan, I would like to be the voice and to be a reflection of other people or the common people that the laws of our government, government aims to protect us, aims for our general welfare, for our common good. And what we can do as responsible citizens is not just to put everything on the government, but we to do our part, to be responsible enough, to be educated enough, and to be well, well prepared on the things that are happening in our society. The division of Palawan is just one of the issues that we should focus on. But the greater picture that we should look on is ourselves and how we could make greater impact for our society, how we could cooperate our government, how we could make a change to the system, and how we could, we could give influence and impact to other people's lives. Thank you. Good evening again. Let, let's be open-minded that everything has a disadvantages and advantages. And I know the government is just doing their job for the triumph and success of our province. And what we should do as a citizen is to cooperate and disseminate just information and also to respect the nature of and God's creation. Thank you. I can say about the three in one Palawan is that there are pros and there are cons. So I think that um, the three in one Palawan focuses on the allocation of bigger budgets in the three areas of Palawan, which is a good thing. Why? Because it will focus on the local people, the tourism, how to boost each municipality's hidden gems, and lastly, to give livelihood more on the local people. Um, you see, the advantage of 3-in-1 Palawan is that there will be bigger budget, but with the, hand, uh, with the guide and hands of a good leader. And I think that the government is pushing this 3-in-1 Palawan for the sake of us Palawanians. It is, it is focused on us. It is focused on what more can our province give. But I think the disadvantage is that when there is a bigger budget, they will more focus on infrastructures, which will lessen their focus on what we really want to focus on, which is sustainable tourism and focus on our natural resources. So I think that um, in a greater impact, as long as they don't um, destroy what, our, uh, what we are focusing on, which is why we are known as the best island in the world, is because of our beautiful, um, beautiful island, which offers so much that not even all of us have been to already. So I think that um, with a good leader who will help um, each district or each division, it will be helpful for us following this. That's all. Thank you. We all know that the plebiscite will be happened in May this year. And it's in our decision that the government or that uh, dividing Palawan will be, uh, we, we, what I mean is that the dividing of Palawan is in our hands. It's, we should be responsible enough to choose our decision, 
we should know the consequences of the decisions that we are going to make. And for me, I believe that the government, and I trust the government, that they already see uh, an advantage on dividing the Palawan. At the same time, is I can also see that the government is now uh, focusing on improving the Palawan. And as I can see that it is not the dividing of Palawan is the issue, but it's the system that we have is has an issue. If we are focusing on uh, the disadvantages of some other people say that what if uh, we are going to have a bigger, uh, bigger, sorry, a bigger, it's the abuse of power and corruption rather. And I think I've been in the Europe when I was in 17 years old and I found that the European countries, particularly Germany, they have that, um, they have a system that focusing on in transparency of the every pennies that is spent by their country. And I think that would be a great opportunity to adopt that kind of system for us to be able to see and know what is what will happen to the money that we that our that our country is spending right now. And I think and I believe that the dividing of Palawan is not the issue, but the system we have. Thank you. In the history of mankind, there were no developments without change and no change without compromise. In my perspective, as long as the three provinces of Palawan shall be entitled to equitable shares in the proceeds from the utilization and development of national wealth, the would-be three provinces can still prosper politically and economically. Let's try to see the brighter side of the matter. I think with divisions that are small in size, one can only expect better leadership and more focused management. Thank you. I believe that the, dividing, the division of Palawan can help with, the, with infrastructures, the development of infrastructures, and as well as more jobs for other people. But I also believe that we as citizens of Palawan, we should also help improve this law. We should always speak up to our government on what is going on, and we should always voice out our opinion. As a country is not just built or is not just grown by just the officials, it is also grown by the citizens that is working and making a life. Thank you. There you go. Thank you so much to our six ladies. Ooh. Thank you so much, Miss Cagayan Silio, Aborland, Umaran, San Vicente. Princessa and, and Miss Tay Tay. Yes. Wow. Okay. You really have a sharp mind, Jen. Oh, it's on Let's have our next. Okay, thank you. Um, Pardon? Please, you mind the banana walk forward. <laughs> oh, diba? <laughs> okay. Um, nabanggit kanina yung uh, 3 in 1. Ito naman ay yung sarili opinion kanina, batay sa Palawan. So ngayon, kayong lahat ay nasa magkakaibang mga munisipyo. Okay, kayo yung nakakaalam ng mga sitwasyon ninyo doon. So para sa inyo ba, better yes or no? Bakit? Kung makahati ang palawan sa tatlo. Thank you. Um, dito na mo. I put my trust to the lawmakers and authorities of our province. For me, it doesn't matter that much whether Palawan stands alone or gets divided into three. For me, the thing for this thing to work is standing together and working alongside each other. As a Miss Palawan candidate, this foregoing issue, I can only hope wherever this issue ends up to, upholds the general welfare and the province as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Uh. Good evening, everyone. For us, the bottom line is simple. As long as at the heart of the bill, 
there is the welfare of all Palaguenos, especially us in the far off islands, wherein finally field offices will be able to reach our areas and Dilapacanyan will not need to go to Puerto Princesa City to fix, for example, business deals or permits. Um, we will be able to utilize and to have the government services right there in an island. So for me, for the interest of my people, I think as long as this bill has the heart and the welfare of the Palawenu people in its core, and it is implemented well with the right leadership and governance, then it is great for the province. Thank you. Since the Agutaya is the only at Ainet located in the middle part of the Palawan in Panay, I agree with I agree with even though we divide it into three parts because we are all, we are all, we are only uh, one Filipino well we are one Palawanians and one nation in We all know that Balabac is the farthest municipality in the southern part of Palawan. And as a spokesperson for the Balabac, I, it is a great opportunity for us because it will give us the far passes and, and, passes and communication and the process will be easier and better. Thank you. Yeah. As a spokesperson of Bataraza, I totally agree for the uh, dividing of the Palawan because it will be a great opportunity for the southern part of the Palawan <coughs> that can help them uh, to be more easy for the uh, passing the papers or anything that our indigenous people will, will not be. Uh, will not spend more money for them to go here in, in, in Puerto Princesa and the Southern Palawan will promote the local tourism to help improve and help improve our, uh, our province. That's all. Thank you. I am totally agree with the proposed bill about the division of Palawan into three provinces because uh, many job opportunities will be given to the people of our community and the less noticed communities in the province will be given more attention by the local government units and it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that we are literally departed but it only means that we will work as yeah, we will have unity to work for the economic growth of Palawan. Thank you. Madam. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am from the small side, the northern part of Palawan. <clears throat> I believe that the main goal of this of this division is to, to be able to divide the service of the government in the whole Palawan. And I believe that it is according to the governor it is secure it will secure the income of palawan and it will help for us to establish a an economy that will help the, the palawanians to be able to achieve a utopian or a city that is perfect enough that will be and i believe that, that the leadership of the government will make Palawan to the next level and will be and I and my hope for the government is that they be able to lead Palawan and for the betterment of all Palawanians. That would be all thank you. Good evening everyone. For me I am agreed to divide the Palawan into three because I do believe we can focus to the tourist destination of each municipality in Palawan. I believe that there is no municipality that should be left behind. Thank you. Good evening. I am from the municipality of Rizal. So Rizal is the one of the municipality that is in the southern part of Palawan. And as a spokesperson, I do believe that about this issue, the government is doing their best and 
they are only doing their best for the betterment of our province. And by that, I, I think, like, and, and I strongly believe that we as a citizens should unite with our government because unity is the only way for us to achieve the things that we want. After all, Palawan is for Palawanis. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. So as a first class municipality, I am agreed to the dividing of Palawan into three. First and foremost, it will give job opportunities to all of the people living here in Palawan. Plus, it will be beneficial for the people and the, for the processing of their papers, especially for those who are living in our rural areas. And as a citizen, we should take part in this because I believe that we only we, we do not lose when we fail. We don't, we do not lose when we fail, we only lose when we do not do our part. And we should be united together as one Filipino, even though we are divided into three. Thank you. There you go. I think all the ladies were able to give, give their answers, right, Janet? Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so we still have another question from... So probably this... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we still have another one. Hi, ma'am. Good evening. Hi, good evening. I'm Sugar Santos from Palawan News. And uh, we'd like to hear from Rizal, Joanna Marie, uh, Lina Patan, Clyde Del Hope, and Buswanga, Miss Angelica. Alright, so what was the biggest change in your life when COVID-19 happened? And how are you helping your local community in its COVID-19 response? As the pandemic has started to the whole world, I do believe that it hit, it had really made a huge impact to the lives of everyone. And as for me, I was my my habit is going outdoors and exploring new things. And one of the impact of this pandemic is that I won't be able to go outside more freely. And by that, that is something that I would change in this new normal that we have. I have to follow the safety protocols that we have and because I believe that in this time of pandemic we the people should collaborate with our government because if we collaborate that with our govern government we will be able to prevent the spreading of the virus. Thank you. Upon the arrival of COVID-19 and our shores, it was definitely a big change for all of us, for me even. Um, as you all know, I study in UP Diliman, so I'm used to being in the city, in the mainland Luzon, and I actually had to go back here. And what I was able to do, even remotely, was stay in contact with my affiliations. I'm part of organizations such as the UP Palawenos, the UP Zoological Society, and a political org in UP, and we were actually able to raise funds for our frontliners, for our local nurses, our um, the people who are on the front lines when we were facing this pandemic. I was happy to do that, and I um, it fills my heart with so much joy that I am given opportunities such as that, even with. Um, a uh, problem as grave as COVID, it actually brought out the generosity, the resilience, and the good-heartedness of the Filipino people. Thank you. Before pandemic, I have plans and dreams to um, to to make, but it it doesn't give it doesn't cancel my dreams to be my dream to be an architect. I should have I should. I should, I should have taken my board exam on July, but it, it was postponed due to pandemic. But on the other hand, this pandemic taught me that humanity is not yet dead. I have my small wins during pandemic. I have given half of my salary in feeding the frontliners, and I think that is wonderful and wonderful on the other side of this pandemic that we'll be able to give back to people, even we ourselves need help. That would be all. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. Now let's have... Yes, sir, probably this is the last question. Well, uh, oh, this is uh, just a decision-making. 
Uh, I want to call Puerto Sesa, San Vicente, Cuyo, Cabrillon City, and El Lido. Well, I'm speaking with, with ano, uh, ako lang sa akin, sa kanila, I don't know kung mayroon na silang na, na, napili. But this is my question, uh, ladies. Uh, what is your weakest point that could be changed if you reign Miss Palawan 2021? And, and this uh, weak, uh, I mean, pinakamahinan yung characteristics could change the community when you reign as Miss Palawan 2021. Again, sir, pardon, can you repeat the question? What is your weakest, yung pinakamahinan yung uh, katangian? No? Anong pinakamahinan katangian na matindigalog nyo when you reign Miss Palawan 2021 and this change could change also the community as well during your reign? Um, I myself is an overthinker. I am very insecure when it comes to my physical um, body. Um, I um, I have so many doubts every day. I think I think it's normal for me to cry at least at least once a day because of my doubts and insecurities. And joining this pageant, if ever I win the title, it will be um, it will be a trophy, somewhat a reward that. I can do it despite of my despite of me thinking that I am not enough or I have flaws and I cannot do this. Um, the title itself is a living evidence that there is nothing I can do. And I think this would be a statement also that could help the uh, youth like me um, who thinks that they are not enough or they should change themselves if just to fit in, just to just to join a beauty pageant. It will be a statement that I'll uh, accept accept I'm sorry. Excuse me. Uh, accepting yourself is enough. Being yourself is enough. If if the people won't um, if you yourself do not believe that you are not you are not enough, the people looking at you, the people believing in you, um, will also I know will also think that you can do it. That's why it's important to believe in yourself more. First, thank you. Hi, good evening. For those who don't know, I grew up introvert. And people know me. And my weakest point is public speaking. But with this pageant, this pageant taught us to speak up and believe in my capabilities. And if ever I win as Miss Palawan 2021, I would like to bring this aspect to connect more, to inspire more to other people, and empower a lot of youth out there who was once also like me. And I believe with this, I could create a big range of influencers that could help me change the world. Thank you. One of my weakness is sometimes I get tunnel vision. Once I start something, I focus on that on that specific thing and and finish it. And as a candidate of Miss Palawan 2021, if I win the crown, I can use this weakness to to focus on my advocacy. My advocacy is to help students who are unfortunate enough to go to college and to, um, and to teach them how to start up their own business using their skills and talents. As an entrepreneur, I, I learned through my whole college years that yourself is your biggest challenger. And you have, the only enemy that you can take down is yourself. And I believe that using my weakness on having tunnel vision, I know that I can be able to focus more and finish this pageant with my colors. Thank you. For me, my greatest weakness as a woman is the fear of losing myself, the fear of my insecurities, the fear of being rejected. When I was a kid, I experienced bullying, and I've been through a tough childhood. 
And as Miss Palawan, if I will be given a chance to be the next Miss Palawan 2021, I want to be a symbol of hope. I want to be a symbol of a woman who accepts herself, who knows her worth, knows her value, just not just for herself, but for other people. Miss Palawan is not just for us to be phenomenal women, but to fulfill our purpose, a greater purpose for our community, to help others accept themselves. To let other people know, especially women, that beauty is not based on the standards of the society. Beauty is not because of the acceptance of other people. It is within us. How we see ourselves. How we see and accept ourselves as who we really are. And when we are contented and we are ready to accept ourselves, then we can be successful and be of a greater purpose. Thank you. I am, um, I am not very good at Q&A, and that is my weakest point. So if I will win Miss Palawan 2021, that will be a big achievement for me. In order so that I could, I could, um, I could stand up to everyone, to anyone that who belittles me, and I will encourage other people, especially the youths out there, that no matter who you are your skin color, your gender identity, or your religion is, believe in yourself, have courage, be kind, and be confident. Thank you. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Now the tense is over, so especially you all the candidates, you can now breathe peacefully. <laughs> Thank you so much to all our press people who participated. Later on, we will be awarding our darling of the press, which will be chosen by our dear friends from the media. But before that, we would like to invite everyone to our future activities. We will be having our red carpet fashion show in collaboration with Photon Puerto Princesa on January 17, 2021. That is on Sunday, 7 p.m. at the Photon Puerto Princesa showroom in Barangay Tagburos, North National Highway. This is in line with Photon Puerto Princesa's second year anniversary. Tickets are now available for only 200 pesos for VIP and 300 for VVIP. Oh, and there you have it. And of course, on January 30, 2021, the National Costume and Talent Competition will be held in Astoria, Palawan, 7 p.m. as well. For tickets, you may now reserve yours, for there will be only limited tickets available. We hope to be there. And on February 13, 2021, we will be having our long gowns and swimsuit preliminary at El Nido, Palawan. I'm so very much excited for this. Well, I am so excited as well. Just, whoo, in El Nido. The date note that will be on February 13, a day before the um, Valentine's Day. Maybe you can celebrate your Valentine's Day there in El Nido, Palawan. And of course, for the information of everyone, our Grand Coronation Night will be on February 27, 2021 here at the per at Puerto Princesa City Coliseum. In Puerto Princesa City Coliseum. Are you excited? I'm very much excited. Well, I'm so excited because I've heard great news. Uh, we will be having, um, what do you call this one? Surprise guest. Hello. Yes. Everybody's looking for uh, so you should watch out for that. You know what? At this moment, we would like to acknowledge some of our sponsors. 